I need one place where I know all 837,000 are definitely gonna see this because I'm getting guaranteed delivery. That makes a ton of sense. It's why I continue to have an email service and it's why I have community, the tech service. I'm extremely excited for this next guest. Uh, I think this will be a very fruitful conversation and I think uh, it's gonna bring a a lot of value to this specific uh, podcast that we're putting out, this special. So my friend, why don't you tell everybody your name, what you do, uh, and then we'll get right into it. My name is Eamon Hariri. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Vero. So for the people that don't know out there, uh, why don't you tell us what Vero is and a little bit about the history. So Vero was established as a, an alternative social, uh, social network online um, that really differentiates itself mostly by not doing uh, any ads or data mining. So we have a chronological feed uh, creators can post what they want to their followers. They gain access to 100% of their followers without the platform um, manipulating the feed in any way. So it's a fully chronological feed. And um, we're not doing ads. We're not in the attention economy at all. We're in the subscription uh, business. We haven't turned subscription on, so anybody that joins Vero today uh, gains access to Vero for life without ever paying a subscription. But then when we turn... So there's the arbitrage. Dustin, get that BMX <laughs> channel up now. Because he's going to clearly turn on subscription at some point, but you can be locked in in perpetuity? Yeah, in perpetuity. That's right. Dust? Noted. Noted. Go ahead. And then later on, when we do turn on subscription, it's going to be a very small amount that people will pay, uh, a yearly fee or a monthly fee. And it's really for us to just keep the the platform honest for us to be serving our users having them be our customers rather than advertisers be our customers where we have to constantly try to get the attention of the users to use the platform so that they can see ads so what's your take on this question do you believe that the subscription so we as people who post on social will be paying 9.99 13.99 29.99 100 whatever it ends up being um, but we get 100% of the audience that decides to follow us to see it, which That's is obviously right. extremely different than it is today. Yeah. More like email. Right, um, exactly. Yeah. Right? Do you believe, if I asked you for foreshadow for me, do you think in 10 years that a creator like myself, do you think I'll have one of each? Meaning, or se- I'll probably be on several platforms, but or, or not. Do you, do, actually, that's actually the question. Do you believe that most people in 10 years will have a social network that they're paying for, a subscription, and one that looks more like the ones that are out here today where there's an algorithm and ads and things of that nature? Or do you think one or the other beats out the other in a model? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a great question. I, I'm not here to replace everything and be the be all end all with our platform. I think what we're trying to establish is is choice and a choice that gives you more value for the time that you're putting into the into the platform, whether you're a user and our customer using the platform and getting the most value for the time that you're spending or a creator like yourself who's spending time making content, thinking about ideas, thinking about a rollout, having do, a team and user, all of those things. How does things. the user get value? In so the user should get value for the kind of content that they're getting, whether it's, um, it, whether it's content from their friends that's personal and meaningful to them at that level or from creators that are providing value to them through the whatever it is that they're getting across whether it's entertaining whether it's uh, teaching them something whatever it is but that's something they're able to get in other platforms no absolutely okay but without the ads and and without all of the which is a real thing for a lot of people no absolutely so from the user's side the people consuming no ads high value product in comparison to what's out there for the creators uh there's a value in that everyone's going to actually see it uh of the audience i amass absolutely um Um, is there, is there ways to offset your subscription costs? Yeah, that's an interesting question. So, we just recently um, we recently acquired a company called Tokenize, which is a regulated stock exchange. And you may say, okay, what what's why is a social network buying a stock exchange? And the whole idea there is for the community to end up having a chance of owning a piece of the platform and doing it in a regulated way that has us do it where it's all legal and you can 
start to earn shares in the company. Now, details uh, yeah, will come out in the future. For sure. Um, in the near future, I mean, we just acquired this this company and we merged it into into the social network, and it's really the f- first time anybody's done this. And where our heads at is, we're building this for the community. We're building this for the rest of the world, not for us to own and reap the benefits of that uh, by ourselves, but for us to be joined by the creators yep. who get to earn a piece of the platform by bringing in people. Uh, who start to pay for content or pay for their channels or whatever else or pay for the app but also for those users who are coming in and making a decision that they want an alternative platform they're paying a subscription you know wouldn't it be great if they could earn shares in the company as well take me back to the history of the platform because i know you know and i I notice how quickly my team shakes their head because we watch everything and i mean everything there was a moment of what I would call micro virality for this platform. Can you take me back to when that exactly was? Because it feels like five or six years ago, right? And what, you know, A, how deeply, if at all, were you involved at that point? Because it's blurry in my head if like you came in later and bought a piece or you were actually there for day one, you know, like I can see by your body, everybody listening to the body language, no, no, so you were there. What what was behind the micro virality of it? Because there was a few minutes there where it was really spiking and, and it was happening for a, a period of weeks or months. I remember very vividly. Sure. And, and, and this is a big compliment. They're the, in the history, and I'm like, I feel like I'm gonna be in like a lot of documentaries when I'm older. In the history of social networks, Obviously we know the ones we all know. There's things like Vine that really had it, but they sold in a year. Uh, And unlike what Meta did with Instagram, Twitter decided to shut down Vine. Um, But there are very few social networks that have even gotten to that point where they've had a moment. What was that? And, and, And obviously after it happened, it was probably easier to figure out why it happened, or maybe not, because virality is interesting, but what was that? When was that? And and how did it happen? Yeah, it's uh, I I've definitely have been there since day one. I can okay. show you the scars on I my back you, to show you. that, and the and the white hairs in my <laughs> beard to to also show that. But um, what happened in two thousand eighteen, and that's when uh, was the virality. Yeah, two thousand eighteen. God, I feel, I feel, COVID, I feel, must have made me like God. Was it really <laughs> old, as re- I would have like lost that bet? I yeah. would have thought it was old, longer than that. What, when did it come out? So 2015 is when we put it in the iOS app store. I think I might have wrote an article about that. And it came uh, after that on Android. And now we're on iPad and desktop. And desktop is a beta for the the time being and Android as well. But we're coming out of beta soon on Android. So uh, in 2018, what happened was we, we were experimenting with ads. Like we were actually just trying a few ads and letting people know about us. Uh, to increase the number of, of installs per day and just see if we, you know, what would happen if we put out a message that yeah. says no ads, no algorithms, and no data mining. That's it. I mean, that's that the chronological it. feed. Yeah, we, we just put those those four uh, phrases in different uh, small video clips and just put them out as ads. And um, And I didn't spend that much on it either. And as you said, we became number one app in the world. That's crazy. So it it was really, I think, it, we we turned all the ads off at that point because we couldn't handle the the load. That was the major part that um, brought things back down. But we we sort of learned from that that it doesn't take much to, especially with what it is that we're doing, to uh, get a lot of attention. And I think now more than ever, people are seeking an, an alternative. We haven't done any real advertising since then. Yes. And we made a decision, a conscious one, to build the tech stack that is scalable, to keep building on community, which is what we've been doing. So all the growth that you're seeing in the platform, the six and a half million users and above that we have now have all been organic. Um, And now we've just introduced the investment stack which we're very excited about because... Well, it's a massive innovation. Well, it, and it, it gives a return for the time that you're spending on social, especially for the creators yeah, who are br- bringing so much value to the platforms that they decide to use, but they don't get 
access to the equity value in the platform. No, they get di- they get different value. They do. They get different value, which is it's actually jerry rigged onto the existing platforms because of it's sponsored posts, uh, it's this and that, or the stuff they do off platform, or the stuff that right? they once do off platform. Like fame is real. Yes. So once you build it, like totally. Charlie D'Amelio makes a lot of money because of what happened on TikTok outside of things she does on TikTok. Absolutely. But to your point, for a smaller group, this infrastructure would create an extreme long tail of opportunity. Correct. And yeah, we're, we're going after the everyday creator that wants to make money and wants to make um, a living off of the thing that they're passionate about. And they don't need that much. But what's interesting is when we look at, um, you know, if I, if I sit and told you right now that somebody had a thousand followers, you'd say, okay, that, that's cool. But, you know, that's on the, the lower side of the, the spectrum. You've got people who've got hundreds of millions of followers. Yeah, of and so... But I mean, for, of course, to anybody who wants to make a living doing it. I mean, absolutely. For a lot of people listening right now, they're like, I'd fucking kill for a thousand followers. No, absolutely. For normal every day. But like, of course, if someone wants to make a living, a thousand is going to be on the extreme low side. Exactly. And But when you start to look at uh, whether it's subscription or you start to look at backers of your project, whatever that may be, that's a lot of people oh. who, you know, who... I it, always... Exactly. I love you for that because, man... Back in the day, I was like, do you understand what 80, 115 people that want to see what you have to say looks like physically? 100%. Put, you put 815 people in an auditorium and you speak in front of them, you know, you'd be like, holy crap, I yeah, made it. Totally. But in this world, you're like, I'm an imposter syndrome. I suck. I'm like, you don't <laughs> suck. But to your point, you know, as we go into the commerce part of the conversation, what the blockchain enables potentially over time. Uh, and obviously, when I hear you talk about what you're talking about, it's famous of what's going on in the U.S. with the SEC and what's going on in Europe. Like, clearly the governments around the world, Hong Kong this and China that and U.S. this, the regulation and the the understanding of cryptocurrency and NFTs is kind of a little bit unclear. It seemed clear and it got, it kind of like took a step backwards. It seemed in 1920, like things were kind of pretty obvious yeah. uh, with Coinbase going public and things in nature, but clearly we've taken a step back of like, it, you know, people just don't know what. So obviously you going specific to, you know, an actual stock market enables you to actually punch those two together. Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah. How does that work for people that live in countries where it's not as clear? Like obviously the stock market that you bought is not in the US, right? We're, That's right. Right. So like, what does that mean for someone that lives in London or for someone that lives in Amsterdam or for someone that lives in the US? Will they have to, is there going to be a little period of time of clarity if they're going to be able to interact with those yeah, commerce we'll make, realities? Yeah, we'll make all of those things clear. Whenever yeah. anything that happens on the stock market, we'll make sure that sure. things are clear. Yeah. But definitely going down the path of regulation gets you there further. It's 100%. harder to do, up front. obviously, up front. But it's nice to have clarity. Exactly. And then yeah. you just have um, just what a, a system. You, just as a guy paying attention since you did that, what you've got to tell you on like, What's your bet on the governments around the world to actually have clarity on cryptocurrencies and blockchains and NFTs? What's, what's your hot take? Do you think it's another two, three, four years of, of you know, politicking and government stuff before we, as a society of 8 billion, have clarity of where and what and how we can do things? Look, I think there is clarity around what is a security. Yep. I think the, the problem is is that we're, we're starting, you know, we're, what's colliding right now is our us being used to things happening quickly yes. and being able to be instanced on the internet yes. and for that to be the disrupting force. Uh, force and enough of a disruptor that all of this old you yes. know, sort of law or whatever it is yes. gets changed. Yes. The reality is, is that these things have been put in place to protect investors. Yes. So these laws are there to, def- or rather to back up the usage of something called a security. And a security is one of actually one of the best inventions in the world. It it allows us to own shares in things that exist and we get to back them and we get to reap the benefits of them. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to marry that concept with this endless supply of creativity that's out there. Whether it's the creativity that uh, creates a song that could be a hit mm-hmm. or a movie um, or any kind of business and hopefully we, in the we, future we've had publishers yeah publishers absolutely play as banks 
upfront economics, right? Yes, exactly. And obviously the blockchain is going to have an incredible opportunity to create innovation in that scheme. Yeah, and and all block what blockchain does, you know, all blockchain does or or what it does extremely well is add that layer of transparency. That's the number one thing. Mm -hmm. And I look at web3 as a it's actually a set of behavior. Mm -hmm. It's not a technology stack. It's people deciding they want to include other people into the project that they're doing um, and be completely transparent and use blockchain as a transparency On layer. the back of a profound new technology. On, on yeah. the back of a profound new technology that backs up if the concept under, if, of transparency. I agree. If people understood actually what a blockchain did versus a internet server. Yes the speed in which every it actually is addressing what everyone's anxious about but it's misbranded absolutely yeah and but at the same time there's a lot of work that has to go in in advance it's kind of, of like of course you know it's the difference between playing pool a billiards pool and just hitting the ball and something goes in and you say look something went in yeah of course you have to call it out a ahead of time you have to say here is what i'm doing i'm yeah. building a business that does this this yeah. is what you can expect yeah. everything's at ri you know there's risk right. associated to everything etc but this is the kind of business that i'm in or this is yeah. what this uh, piece of art looks like or or is valued at etc and the more you can be transparent ahead of time and then stick to what it is that you're doing, then the outcome then is, you know, for everybody to benefit from. Um, parting shot. What have we not talked about in this time together that you'd love for people to know about you, the world, blockchain, Vero, creativity, subscription, or all of the above? I guess if, if there's a parting thought, it's we're building, we're building for better. We're not here... Um, you know, saying we have all the answers or we're building an, an alternative platform that is the platform that will take over from every other platform. Absolutely, we want it to be one of the biggest platforms uh, in in the world right why now and to be an alternative. That's right, why not? To be a viable alternative. But what we are doing is we're coming from a place that says, look, things have been done in a certain way up yep. to now. And we think that it's one-sided. It's a win on one side we're always trying to create a win-win. A win-win for creators, for the users of a platform, for the platform itself, and for everybody to join and be able to, whoever does decide to make a move and come over to our platform, they get to have a win-win with you us. You know, it's funny, and I, by the way, I look, my favorite word in the world is and instead of or, favorite. But I will say one thing. I, I am fascinated by how much value I do think people get from free social networks that have an ungodly amount of human beings consuming. You know, I think, it. you know, we talk about a Charlie D'Amelio or a Logan Paul, but Jesus, there is a very long tail of human beings, hundreds yes. of thousands, yes. who make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year being influenced on these platforms that cost them nothing, sure. right? I think what's exciting is, I, I really don't think it's as one-sided I really don't. I think it's a more of a game of and than one-sided. I, I, for example, immediately am interested in the concept of having one of my platforms guarantee that all, you know, I would rather have Vero as a compliment to all my other social. And I have a lot of social. Yeah, sure. Right? Of course. I'm sitting here and thinking, and I'm like, I'm getting excited. I'm like, hey, I better sign up now so I don't have to pay the fucking subscription fee. <laughs> let, me get, let me get a little micro arbin. But I'm like, you know, this is gonna be awesome. It's kind of like how I use community, the text message yeah, service. Sure. Um, I'm like, mm, I'd love to have one social network that only has a million. This is my standards, only a million. The others have more. Be because not everyone listening actually wants to see actually every piece from me. They're fine following me, but they prefer, right? And I do a lot of different stuff, wine and jets and this. But that'd be really cool. That's like something I actually need. I need one place where I know all 837,000 are definitely gonna see this because I'm getting guaranteed delivery. That makes a ton of sense. It's why I continue to have an email service and it's why I have community, the tech service. Right, exactly. So yeah. looking forward to checking out for myself. Everybody, you should check out Vero, V-E-R-O. Yeah. Uh, and like uh, in the App Store, that's how it is? Yeah, in the yeah. App Store, in the Android Store. And uh, we have an iPad app and a desktop app is in beta So as well. I know a bunch of you, especially the Instagram crew of 2018, I know a bunch of you might actually have this on your phone because you were on it for like a hot minute. Uh, 
would love to hear from everybody. Hit me up on Twitter at Gary V E E uh, on your feedback on this and or or. Do you think the social world will be in a five ten year window subscription only uh, the way it is now and no subscription services come to the top ten or do you see it the way we talked about here with and where there is a subscription player and there is and look only fans Patreon right Substack like there is clearly content being made that people pay for and so. Um, and and in your world, it's actually the person that's making it that's paying it, paying right the subscription. No, actually, so everybody gets to everybody pays a small fee, and that way it makes it sustainable. The idea, though, of marrying it with this um, tokenized stock exchange is that everybody also gets benefits. a piece so and benefits on the off, upfront, off of the put platform. The, put, put the uh, blockchain to the past because yeah, I think sure. it's a, above a lot of people's pay grade in the short term, but will become normalized soon in the. In the step one, though I'm not down, I mean, as you can imagine, I'm very excited about what you're talking about there. Um, everyone pays eventually. It hasn't happened yet, as I heard from you. That's but right. anybody that signs up pays? Yes, but pays a very small amount. Understood. As opposed and to... And is there any different dynamic if you're a cr- high volume creator of output? Or does that happen because of the secondary all. thing? Yeah, no. So, so if, you're, just, if you're bringing a ton of traffic, yeah. we're not going to charge you more. Of course. Or anything like we're that. Or posting more often. Or posting more <laughs> or access to more people. Because right now you're posting, but you're only gaining access to about 3% of your audience. Yeah. In our case, you gain 100% access to, to What about audience. virality? Virality. That's going to be interesting, right? Because yeah, the framework absolutely. is based on emails don't go viral. Right, so like one they of the kind of ben- yeah, they kind of do. You and I are old. We used to forward emails. I got bad. News I just aged you. us. Yeah, right the kids exactly. don't fucking yeah. forward emails, brother. Um, uh, but by the way, kids, no bullshit. In the late nineties, yeah, like pre-social networks, if you got people used to send random funny emails to their entire address book, and then people would send it like. Email was like early social. Like you would actually forward, reply all, forward. Anyway, back to the point. So cool. But a lot of people have benefited by having no audience, going on TikTok, posting, and then boom, 800,000. That's been very beneficial to them. Is there a viral component to Vero that yeah, you're thinking Yeah, I think you're through? talking about discovery. And yes, discovery is something that we're, so we're building it step by step. Yep. And discovery is absolutely something Understood. that we're, we're building into Good. it. So if you're somebody whose content is being seen by a lot of people and is having a great reaction, when you're in a discovery mode, you can go and Understood. discover that kind Got of content Understood. and then you Just can discover the new feed, creator. Not in your place. core feed because you've chosen. I totally understand. You only choose who goes into that. By the way, that's how social started. Totally. It's obviously evolved into an AI-driven discovery model and clearly is effective because people do like passive discovery. Sure. But to your point, I, I can speak for myself, I am actively still a person that has to rely on email and my, you know, two one two nine three one five seven three one sign up now because I need a place that quote unquote guarantees it because if I want to post something that I want everybody to know about and I post it on social I got to work super hard to make that creative as fuck which is almost inherently impossible sure. when you want people to know Every something because you're time. selling so it's really interesting stuff brother thank you so much thanks for having me